we're looking at more like remodeling because we got so many guys coming back, young guys coming back. And then we got these two old guys coming back off injury, so we're hoping that their bodies will stand up to everything. That was Warren Gross's line, so. <laughs> by Jason. No, no, we're, I, I mean, we're excited. We think we got a very good bunch of guys. They had a good spring. They had a great trip to Brazil. And, uh, you know, they're set to go. They're ready to go. Let me, let me tell you something, I'm knocking wood, <laughs> especially up here, uh, every day. Um, the last three years have been tough because uh, it's been injuries to key people, and especially key people up and down our spine. So, um, especially if these two can keep healthy, if Andy Parr can come back healthy. Uh, last year it was uh, Andreas Casillas with a broken, uh, fractured cheekbone. So if those guys, if we can keep the key components healthy, then we're going to be in good shape. Uh, Coach, I was just wondering, uh, also you guys, uh, as far as the trip to Brazil, uh, what does that mean for the team? Not only does he have an experience, but also getting to play the uh, level of competition that he has got to play. Obviously, the Brazilians, one of the nations, you know, top soccer, one of the world's top soccer nations. Um, you know, they play so fluidly, so creatively. How that? Well, I'll let these guys answer that because I've been to Brazil quite a few times and this is the second team that we've taken to Brazil. Uh, for Jason, it was his first visit. Mm -hmm. uh, Warren was down before with the U.S. Uh, under-18 national team playing in the Pan American Games. So, hear what they say. Jason, it was a, It was an amazing learning experience. I mean, I've never, never been down there before and just... Uh, just picking things up from playing against the teams that we played, and uh, to experience the whole thing as a team, it really helped us. I mean, we uh, learned some things that we needed to adjust, and picked it up, picked up on a lot of uh, uh, a lot of new things that we think we can bring back and really help us to uh, win this year. Yeah, like what Jason said, uh, I think going to a different country as a team and playing against completely different styles and an element that we're not used to definitely helped our team become closer in the summer, so hopefully we can take experiences from that trip and use that to push forward into the season. Are you hoping for uh, a lot of continuity in the game? How the field in front of you? Just so many injuries in the last few seasons. It would be nice to have kind of the same 10 uh, Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that what makes it different this year than I think maybe the past years is we have a tremendous amount of depth. We have a lot of players and a lot of competition in a lot of positions. And especially having uh, a back four that I worked with for most of last year in the spring and the summer, I feel like having that already established that could help the squad a lot as we get ready to prepare for the season. Or for you personally, um, sort of being, sort of being the guy in goal uh, this year, especially the last year, or the other one for how's that affecting you? I mean, I, it's, I still have a tremendous amount of competition. The people that I train with every day, they have different styles in me, and they push me every day to get better. And I feel like that's what helps my situation so much this season is that I have two very strong keepers this year pushing me every day. It's not like I can just show up to practice and walk around and hang out by any means. I have great keepers working with me every day. So, yeah, I think that it definitely helps to keep training to have that every day where I'm still going after it, hoping to get better to improve throughout the season. Coach, in addition to Jason, uh, who else should we be expecting for goal scoring this season? Well, I think Corey Herxock is, is really doing well, and he and Jason seem to have formed an immediate partnership. Um, and, you know, they're both of, of a different uh, style. So they'll complement each other well. Um, then you throw Trevor Gelsinger into the mix. You, so you throw uh, Rafa Ferreira into the mix. Um, you know we're going to have some depth there, and uh, 
players that will challenge and keep these guys on their toes, uh, especially early in the year because we want to make sure that we um, give Jason a chance to build up his game fitness and uh, keep him healthy, especially for the playoffs. But uh, but we're very pleased with what all the forwards are doing right now. Are you expecting to be a bit more offensive minded this season, or is it still a pretty heavy defensive squad? No, I think um, I think we have the capabilities of scoring a lot of goals. Um, but we're very pleased with the first half against uh, Duquesne when we had uh, basically the group that's leading the way at the moment on the field. They created a number of chances. You're creating chances, then you're not as unhappy coaches if your team's not getting into the box. Um, so we think there's going to be a lot of goals. I mean, I think Jason is good for goals. Corey is good for goals. Trevor Gelsinger is going to get his fair share, and we have a lot of players coming out of the midfield. Uh, our whole intention is to put on a team that is capable of keeping possession of the ball. Coach, um, as far as the midfield, um, what is uh, Mateus Braga bringing to the table for you guys? He was really pretty sharp the other night because he came. I got a couple shots off. He was creating a lot of, of space out there. But talk about what he brings uh, to the midfield and to you know, you guys in the team. Well, again, uh, I'll give you my perspective, and then maybe Jason can give you from a, from a forward because the midfielders are looking to feed the forwards. But uh, Mateus brings a lot of flair and creativity, and um, he's a little bit like Corey Hertzon. He's going to do the unexpected, which is going to keep defenses on their toes. But his uh, ability to dribble and beat people one-on-one -on -one is very good. And uh, again, he's another one of those kids that picked up uh, untimely injuries last season. So hopefully, if he stays healthy, he's going to give us, a, a, again, another creative mix in the middle field. Jay, Jason, you can, you're playing with him. <laughs> uh, Mateus brings uh, quite a few things to the table. I mean, uh, he brings a different mindset, a different mentality than, uh, than a lot of American players that we have. I mean, he's uh, very creative on the ball. and. He can pretty much score anywhere on the field, and he'll be looking to take take a lot of shots. But uh, he also helps us out because he can beat people down the sidelines and get a ball into the middle. So there's uh, uh, and he'll do a lot of unexpected things. So I mean, once uh, once we start clicking, once uh, I mean we get used to playing at each other, he'll uh, he'll bring a lot to help us uh, put a lot of teams away. The thing you got to watch with Brazilians is that. Uh, they think the kickoff is a free kick, and they can score from it. So we have to have Jason right there to sort of remind them that let somebody else take the free kick once in a while. Uh, also, uh, you mentioned uh, Andy Parr coming back from injury. Obviously, he was, he was pretty effective for you guys back in 2006 and 2007. Uh, you mentioned that there might be possibly some rotation back there. How do you see him fitting in? Well, like Jason, Andy was out for a whole year, so he's got to work his way back into the uh, starting lineup. But knowing Andy, he's going to challenge for that. Um, he's going to face some serious competition in terms of uh, Andreas Casillas and Mark Fetro, who are both playing very well and who have established a partnership. Uh, but, I mean, Andy's a good player, and uh, over the course of the season, we're going to have to use uh, quite a few players. And as Warren mentioned, uh, we're pleased with the depth that we had. Uh, when you start, you know, when you start playing three games in a week, you better have a strong squad. And typically, we're looking at about 21 players that are going to have to see significant game time. But the, but the key is, as, a, as in an earlier question, and Warren alludes to it as well, you need to keep that consistency. Now, in the past, we haven't had it because of injuries. Now, it's also a matter of finding the right partnerships, the two center backs, the two center midfielders, the two center forwards, for example. And Andy gives us another added dimension for, for that because he could, 
easily play with Andreas, or he could easily play with Mark. How's your goaltender going to be this year? Aristotle. That's, that's our nickname for him. I never knew this guy was such a philosopher until uh, this year. No, I, 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 Warren is very good. I'm, I'm very pleased with what Warren has done. I think he's, he's coming of age and he's really made a great effort to get himself in shape. And uh, he's a guy that keeps, keeps us loose and he's a guy that builds up a good relationship. Uh, he's a big physical presence in the box. And uh, I know if I was a center forward, I wouldn't want to go up against him. He's going to start a new tradition this year with the shutout? He's, he's going to start a new tradition. If we get a shirt out, Warren is going to throw out three t-shirts. And uh, it's going to be a big thank you to the crowd for being the extra defender. So we're looking for people to get behind the team and uh, stress defense anytime our guys are under pressure. And we know the big man is going to... No pressure, right, Warren? <laughs> do you have, if we have crowd, we'll be all right. Do you have any philosophical messages for the fans? Because <laughs> you give them to me every day. I, I don't know. I, I, might, I might have to use them all up on you, Coach. But I mean, definitely, I think, uh, especially with soccer growing, that I mean, there's no reason we've got a beautiful stadium, a beautiful field, and a young, exciting team with lots of players from all over the world. So there's no reason that we shouldn't have people coming out and watching us play. So hopefully, if uh, we start playing well and getting the results right off the bat, we can get big crowds out there, so. You have an exhibition game tonight, right? We play uh, against Binghamton tonight at 6 o'clock, and we hope a lot of people will come out. They can get a sandwich to go at the uh, dining hall, and uh, Warren's too shy to mention it, but he'd like to start his own fan club. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> anybody is. Uh, no, he's he's leaving that open to uh, the fans. See, you don't, don't say these things in front of the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, on a more serious note, um, what players back through the spring, Brazil, I think coming into fall camp, have most surprised you with their uh, development? Um, not really surprised, but uh, we've been impressed with the rapid improvement of some of the younger guys. Uh, like I said before, Cor Corey Herxhock is a soccer junkie and he's been working extremely hard. Uh, of course, if he hangs out with this guy, he's going to know what hard work is. Um, and like Warren said, the, you know, our backup goalkeepers have been wor uh, working very hard and they're pushing him every day in practice. Our back four is becoming really settled. Um, I'm delighted with the progress of Mark Fetro. I think he's got the makings of being big time. Uh, Justin Lee is settling in very well. Patrick Crispin is working very hard uh, to try and establish himself at left back. Kenzie Arment is, is doing very well. We're very impressed with his first touch in his soccer brain. Uh, Frank Castigliola has been working hard. And it looks like he might form a nice partnership with uh, Drew Cost in the middle of the field. Uh, Cost is another one that's been struggling a little bit with a uh, knee ligament uh, uh, stress, um, but you know he's doing well. And we've been impressed with that. Now he's starting to play both sides of the ball. Both Frank and Drew are starting to get the message: Hey, you know, if we want to play with talent on the field. Then they got to do the dog work as well as the, uh, you know, the artist's uh, renderings. So overall, very pleased. And uh, I say there's depth, uh, you know, in the squad. The players are are working hard and, get, and getting things done. Uh, you know, in addition to Ferrara and uh, uh, Gelsinger, there's the freshman Brian Forg has been impressing. Uh, Jacobo Vera has been uh, working. hard. So top to bottom, we're pleased. Jason, uh, just sort of given your height and Mark Fetcher's height, that's sort of like the logical, at least in my mind, logical practice matchup, sort of height on height. Uh, how often do you match up against him in practice? And sort of what does he bring to the table for you from a, a striker standpoint? Uh, it's not that we uh, match up against each other a lot, but uh, a lot of time we're actually working together. 
uh, especially on set pieces. Um, I mean, we both go up to win head balls on for corners on both sides of the field, so uh, we're working together um, a lot more of the time. But uh, he's a great defender and uh, is coming along and has a year under his belt now. And so, I mean, when we do go up uh, against each other in practice, it's always a challenge. And I mean, it's always uh, always competitive. Not to, not to use the old coach's cliches, but uh, every game is going to be important for us. Uh, these guys want to win, and they want to win them all. And we realize, especially in a lot of the other uh, conference games, uh, some of the smaller schools, population-wise anyway, um, are always looking to get a Penn State feather in their belt. So we have to make sure that we're prepared for all of them. There are some uh, key matchups. There are some games that are very attractive on the schedule, but the schedule's put together deliberately so that we have a strength schedule uh, index that, that helps us when we win, get to the uh, big dance. And that's, and, that, and that's the focus. And again, without using a coach's cliche, where you know, I want these guys to take one game at a time and focus on it and then say, all right, boom, that's checked off. Let's move on to the next one. Because I think if you look too far ahead or you uh, start thinking too much about this opposition or that opposition, you're going to you're going to stumble. And there's a lot of good teams out there today. They're very well organized, and they're and soccer's a game where it's it's difficult to score. And uh, teams will uh, will pack it back in and try and hit you on the rebound. Now these guys may think differently, but that's that's that. that's coach speak. One thing we've been working on is uh, putting away the teams that we like, need to need to beat and need to put away. Uh, in the past, one thing we struggled with is letting teams hang around with us, and then they might like, catch a late goal, and the game might be a tie, or the game. I mean, we may may win one nothing, but we're really looking to put teams away early this year, and that was one thing uh, that stood out in my mind through the spring. I mean, we uh, we scored a bunch of goals and. Like played how we should, not played down to the level of our competition. Uh, so I mean, as we'll look for every single game, it's uh, it's those games that we have to win as well and put the teams away that we need to. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much on the same page as them. I feel that uh, once we, even when we go, more importantly for me at least, how the defense reacts when we do go down a goal, I feel like is something that the maturity that we have now this year will definitely improve upon because you're very vulnerable to give up goals. Like people say often goals come in pairs within like five, 10 minutes after a goal is scored. And if mentally the team breaks down after we give up a goal, it gives them a chance to come right back at us again. So I feel like the maturity this year should definitely help prevent the team from giving up second goals and hopefully being able to improve after we give up goals and really lock it down in the backfield. So I'm looking forward to see how our team reacts to pressure situations like that. What was there a feeling after last season, even the last few seasons, that this team has something to prove? Uh, I feel like our squad knows that we have the potential to do great things. And I feel that, I feel like there's a sense of almost, at least after last year for me personally, of frustration knowing that with the injuries and just some things not piecing together at the right time, certain like situations not going our way. So I feel like there's this year definitely a sense of excitement because we have a lot of people coming back. Jason, Andy Parr, like Coach said, are coming back and they're healthy. We have a good group of freshmen and a very strong group of people that have experienced playing last year. So I think this year definitely everyone's excited to finally, hopefully, have everything together and really get after it this year. Jason, how hard was it for you uh, last year, sitting out rehabbing, uh, watching the team not have the best year? You know, a lot of close losses, late defeats. What was that like for you? 
it's always tough when you have to watch a game. I mean, uh, and you can't be out there participating, especially. Uh, I mean, that's something that I was used to, as uh, you know, being part of those big games and everything. But it was uh, it was a great opportunity for me because, like I said, I've never really been been on that side. But I got to learn a lot of things. And when you're on when you're on the sidelines and you can watch things from a different perspective. Uh, I really picked up a lot of things that I'll be able to look, uh, use this year. And uh, the whole year, I mean, it brought a certain kind of fire to me that uh, I'm really looking forward to this season and uh, I'm really uh, look forward to every single practice, every game, because I mean, uh, you don't really know what you're missing until you have to sit out for the whole year and uh, as long as I had to. So I'm really looking forward to the season, and uh, I feel like feel like it helped me a lot just uh, to watch and gain a different perspective of the game. What kind of things did you pick up on? Uh, a lot of positioning aspects, and uh, usually when you're out there as a forward, you only see it from where you are. But uh, that's one thing that uh, that you can really get from watching game tape and uh, to see what spaces you need to be in. Uh, I mean that's that's the biggest part that I learned, like uh, not to take space away and just how the forwards work. I uh, I t had to take on a role last year of uh, of imparting knowledge that uh, that I had in like my in as a forward and help them come along because you learn certain things as as you go out through the years and uh, I figured that uh, to help them learn things that I've already learned would uh, I mean, help me as well to, uh, to really focus on those things. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you.